Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for May, fresh off of Google I.O. Now we have a lot to cover today, so let's get started right away. At Google I.O., we announced a lot of updates to Firebase. So we'll dig into those first and see if you caught all of them. Our new modularized JavaScript SDKs can reduce the Firebase impact on your app size by up to 80%. Firebase performance monitoring has an all new dashboard and near real-time metrics. We added support for cloud storage to our emulator suite, completing the set of backend services you can use for local development. You can now distribute Android app bundles to testers through app distribution. This reduces the app size on average by about 35% compared to universal app APKs. With AppCheck, you can now restrict access to cloud storage, real-time database, and cloud functions to just requests that are coming from your apps. Requests from other code will be rejected. We have new extensions to easily analyze sentiment and comments, to search Firestore content through Algolia, to manage marketing with MailChimp, and to send messages to your users wherever they are with MessageBird. There are new filters and improved game support for Crashlytics. And finally, there's an early access release of Remote Config that allows you to do on-device personalization. Whew, I almost ran out of fingers there. Did you catch all of these updates? Well, if you missed any of them, or you want to hear more details at a more leisurely pace, check out the session below called What's New in Firebase. OK, now let's continue with even newer updates, because there are things we couldn't cover at I.O. You can now use Firebase in your games on devices without Google Play services. In release 7.2 of the SDK for Unity and 7.3 of the SDK for C++, the auth, Firestore, real-time database, functions, and storage services no longer require Play services. We also restructured our C++ SDK build system, resulting in much faster build times. And this means we'll be shipping more games SDK updates that will more closely follow on the iOS and Android updates. It also makes it easier for you to contribute to these SDKs. So head on over to the GitHub link below and start submitting those PRs. Last fall, we made the real-time database available in Europe, and now we've also added it in our Singapore data centers. Hosting your database in this new region significantly reduces the latency of data access for your app's users across all of Asia. We also marked multi-region as generally available now, meaning that all three regions are ready for production workloads. And keep in mind, you can create database instances through the console or through a REST API for each region, US, Europe, and now Asia. Thanks to the new integration between Firebase hosting and Google Domains, adding a custom domain to your website is as simple as clicking Find Domain in the Firebase console and buying a domain from Google Domains. And that's it. There is no step free. With just these two steps, your new domain is linked automatically when you come back to the Firebase console. Support for Swift Package Manager was our most upvoted feature request on GitHub ever. With version 8.0 of the iOS SDKs, Swift Package Manager support is now out of beta and available for general use. We also added a new Firebase app check that I mentioned earlier to reduce chances of abuse of your project. If you enable app check, access to the real-time database, to cloud storage, and cloud functions is only allowed from your apps and not from any other callers. And finally, we added a Firebase Storage.use emulators call that allows your iOS apps to connect to the new cloud storage emulator for a completely local development experience. These last two updates are available for all our major SDKs, so be sure to upgrade to the latest versions with the links I provided below. Those were all of the updates we have time for today. My name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.